Hey guys, hope you are having a great day. If you're new to the channel, I am Steve Chapman of Fishing Florida Radio. And today is a day that I am very excited about. Years ago, I read an article by Ken Duke who, who gave a Vegas odds on what he thought or who he thought could win the classic. So today is my 2019 classic odds Vegas style. Now, mind you, I've done this for six years and I have been lucky enough to guess it twice. And it's always fun to speculate and to do the research and attempt to figure out who has done well at the place that they're having the classic, which is a classic this year is just a few days away. It's on the Tennessee River. It's the largest tributary of the Ohio River, 652 miles long, and it was once known as the Cherokee River, Eastern Tennessee, and it's in Eastern Tennessee and Northern Alabama. And it's a, a important part of the Great Loop. Uh, they have huge stripers in it, and it should be an all out battle this year. From everyone speculating, is this the last great classic? There's a first few things you need to remember when you say something like that. First, you're offending people. We have said it because the whole change up with Major League Fishing and Bass. But Bass has one major thing that you can't take away from. They have a huge membership. The membership for the, the, the magazine and the people who pay every month probably is over 500,000 people. So they will continue to have that and bring up some new some new people. If you're if you're not aware of some of the people that have joined in, you know, there's Chris uh, the the Johnston brothers, Scott Canterbury came up from FLW. There are a lot of fantastic anglers that have joined the elites this year. Are they Kevin Van Dams and Edwin Evers and Jason Christie's? No. But surely and quickly you will know these guys names they are fantastic anglers so i'm not going to go into the last great classic it's going to be a different classic because we don't know if guys are going to still compete in the opens to try to get into the the classic and win it there's that that opportunity still is there for them so that's all right that let we're going too far on so I started working on compiling this whole list before the season started. Um, I sat down over five, six days. I looked up stats on the anglers that were in the classic and came up with my own, I guess, like my own algorithm. It's really hard to find time on Tennessee. So what I, what I tried to do was I tried to find a local lake that's nearby that they've all been they've all went fishing on and I took their averages that they were there and came up with a added it up divided did all this stuff to come up with numbers now some of them are just because they're locals they've been bumped up some some just have done exceptionally well in nearby lakes and that's how I came up with my this list. Is it right? No. There's no such thing as a sure thing. Like I said, in the six years I've done this, I've I've been able to do it twice. One was Casey Ashley, hometown, and the other one was Edwin Evers. And even Edwin Evers, I was debating, was it going to be Edwin? Was it going to be Jason Christie? So it's still one of those things that, you know, I'm I'm guessing, but I'm not. I'm trying to do the best I can. So I, I did that algorithm and I came with what now I consider my Vegas odds. Now my Vegas odds are 225 to one because I could do that. I just don't want to hurt everyone's feelings. And let me say right off the bat, if there's any anglers that, that disagree with this, I, I apologize now. It's not, <laughs> it is not a slight against you. It's just how I feel and where I think people could end up. So, without further ado, here we go. 
Sponsor of this video is Tackle Webs. They have no affiliation to the odds or the opinions of this video, but Tackle Webs is instant gear storage. They have a patented mesh bag that can be put anywhere to give you more storage. The bungee series can be placed and hung in different locations or the hook and loop with marine grade adhesive tape system to allow you for added storage wherever you need it, like the inside of your hatches, side of the boat, wall, truck, car, anywhere you can think. Tackle Web's instant gear storage will keep you organized and help you keep clutter free. If you want more information, go to tacklewebs.com and check it out. At 45 to 1 odds, I have the one and only Chris Lane, who's been a pro for 13 years. He's had 39 top 10s and 8 wins. He's a former classic champion, but he's had a lot of, he had a 14th place, 66th, 74th, 59th, 93rd, and 97th on a local tournament out there. So I have Chris at 45 to 1 odds. Also at 45 to 1s, I have Roy Hawk, who's been a pro for nine years. He's had 22 top 10s, three wins. This is his first classic appearance, thus why he's slightly not higher. Your first classic, there's a lot that goes to this media, Everything else comes at you at full steam. Sometimes you're not able to focus as well as you want to, but Roy is still a great angler, but at 45 to 1 odds. At 40 to 1, we have three people. We have Cliff Perch, Jesse Wiggins, and Jared Littner. We'll start off with Cliff. Cliff has been a pro for 14 years. He's had 23 top 10s, two wins. He, he is in his fifth classic appearance. He's had a a bunch of higher finishes on a local lake for tournaments, including some for FLW and some for the elites, thus giving him that 40 to 1 odds. That is Cliff Perch. Also at 40 to 1 is Jesse Wiggins. Jesse, Jesse Wiggins has been a professional for two years. He's had six top tens, three wins. And this is his third classic, and he has had a, a 67th at Kentucky years uh, in 2018. So he is also 40 to 1. Uh, and last but not least, at 40 to 1 is Jared Littner, who's been a pro for 13 years. This is his seventh classic appearance. He's had 19 top 10 finishes, two wins, and he's had lots of up and downs on. Uh, in local in local tournaments from 37th 61st 83rd 69th 97th and then 34th back in uh 2006 six on kentucky so we have him also at 40 to 1 at 38 to 1 odds an angler that has been a pro for six years he's had 13 top tens and three wins it is Mark Daniels Jr., a fantastic young angler that has a very bright future in front of him. It is his second classic appearance. However, when he was on Kentucky, he had a 75th and 123rd, and that has really hurt him in my algorithm. Still a fantastic angler and someone you should watch for. At 35 to 1 odds... We have Randall Tharp, who's been a, a pro for 10 years, 60 top 10s, 11 wins. This is his fifth classic appearance. He's done well locally, but he's had a couple uh, higher finishes when he was on FLW, which makes him come up. The Honey Badger, Randall Tharp, is one of the great anglers out there. He is a fantastic dude, loves red fishing, loves bass fishing. He just lives fishing, but still kind of high as a 35 to 1 odd person. Also at 35 to 1, we have Adrian Arena. Adrian has been a pro for 7 years. He's had uh, 10 top 10 finishes, um but he still had some some higher ranked finishes on FLW and on the elite on local tournaments. Also at 35 to 1, I have Casey Ashley. Uh, also a classic champ back in 2005. He's been a pro for 12 years, 39 top 10s, 6 wins, and this is his 10th classic appearance uh, on the local lake, on local 
tournaments. He's been 58th, 82nd, 62nd, 42nd, 37th, and 76th back in 2008. And that's why I have uh, the great Casey Ashley and Classic Champ at 35 to 1. Also at 35 to 1 is James Elam. He's been a pro for six years. He's had 11 top 10s, three wins. He had he is a very high ranked angler on Bass Fan. This is his fourth classic appearance, but in local ponds he's had a 71st and a 45th finish. Um, when I did my rankings, he was the eighth ranked angler in the world and doesn't take anything away from how well he's been fishing. But if you look at it from st statistics, uh, James has a tough road ahead of him to win the classic. At 32 to 1 odds, I have Cleef, Keith Pouchet, who's had 10 top 10s. He is currently the 17th ranked angler when I did my thing. he is. This is his second classic appearance. His stats for local tournaments, he's had a 56th, a 90th, and a 12th, uh, all at Kentucky. So that's why I have Keith at 32 to 1 odds. At 30 to 1 odds, we start out with Gerald Sforer, who's been a pro for two years. He's had seven top 10s and... He's had, this is his first classic appearance. He had a 65th and a 44th at a local pond in 2018 2016. Thus why he is at 30 to 1. Also, at, I should mention, Gerald's started off on the new Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour on fire. So if there's something to be said and he can use that, use all of that to come into this classic, he could be one of those guys that you, you know, could sneak up on us. But right now I have him at 30 to 1. Also at 30 to 1 is Drew Benton, great angler. He uh, He's had a couple decent finishes, uh, 58th and 45th in uh, FLW and out there. So I have Drew uh, at 30 to 1 odds. Also at 30 to 1 odds, I have Jake Whitaker, who's had four top 10s. And this is also this also is his first classic appearance. He was 48th on Kentucky, so I kind of snuck him in there at 30 to one. And last but not least, at 30 to one is an angler we all know, Dean Rojas. 20 years as a pro, 57 top tens, four wins, 16th classic appearance. He was currently ranked 39th in the Bass Fan World Rankings when I did all these stats. He's had a lot of tournaments over in Kentucky and other places where he's done mediocre. 51st, 46th, 71st, another 71st, 52nd, 27th, 19th, 63rd, and 17th. So for Dean, I put him in that 30 to 1 category. At 20. Our next angler that is a 100% chance that he will yell and scream when he catches a big fish. But right now he's 25 to 1 in my standings. Mike Iconelli, who is one of the faces that everyone loves to see. He's been a pro for 20 years. 81 top 10s. 10 wins. This is his 20th classic appearance. He's been a classic champion back in 2003, Angler of the Year in 2006, but in local rivers. He has had a 16th place finish on the Tennessee River, but in on the other rivers, he's had a 60th, a 99th, a 58th, a 14th, a 63rd, a 39th, and a 67th, all at Kentucky, thus giving him a 25-1 to 1 odds to win. But if there's a fan favorite, it is he is definitely one of a handful. Also at 25 to 1, one of the anglers that I think is the man. I don't think this I think this young man is the future, one of the people that is the future of our sport. He's been a pro for 9 years. He is Justin Lucas, 29 top 10s, 2 wins. This is his fourth classic appearance, but he is last year's elite angler of the year. Thus, he has moved up because of that. Not the way, I don't think he's got the start that he wanted on Major League Fishing, but 
I think that Justin is one of those guys that you just cannot say enough good things about. So I have Justin at 25 to 1. Also at 25 to 1, Game Face Cliff Pace is out here. Former classic champion. He's been a pro for 14 years. 29 top 10s, 3 wins. He was the 2013 classic champ. And this is his eighth classic appearance. So Cliff Pace I have at 25 to 1. Also at 25 to 1, I have Alton Jones Jr. Jr. I don't know why I said it like that, but I thought it'd be funny. Probably isn't. So Alton Jones Jr., it's his second year as a pro. He's been, uh, well, I should say, this. when I say pro, it means in the elites or major league fishing. He's had three top tens, one win. He is this is his second classic appearance and at he in 2018 he came in 43rd in at Kentucky. So I have Elton Jones at Elton Jones Jr. at 25 to 1. Also at 25 to 1, I have an angler who cut off his hair or had Mark Zona cut it off on Zona Live sometime last year and I had a I have I have a huge amount of respect for this man. He is Seth Fiedler, Feeder. I don't know how to say his last name. I'm going to say Fiedler. He's been a pro for four years. He's had 11 top tens, two wins. Uh, this is his second classic appearance. And in 2018 and in 2015, he had a 34th and a 58th on Kentucky. So Seth is at 25 to 1. At 20 to 1 odds, this guy is a pure stud. And I'm not joking. He's had nine classic appearances. He's had 21 top tens, three wins. He was Angler of the Year just two years ago. Bass Federation National Champ in 2010. When I did this stuff, he was the third ranked angler on the planet. He is Brandon Palinick. I've been out there with him on the classic. Absolute focused stud. And while I have him at 20 to 1, I really hope that he does much better than that. But I'm just looking at past experiences. Also at 21, Micah Frazier, nine years as a pro, three top tens. This is his first classic appearance. He's had some some mediocre up and down tournaments uh at Kentucky. From 98th, a 6th, a 31st, a 48th, and a 30th when he was with FLW. It's a close lake, so I used it as part of my algorithm. But Micah Frazier is at 20-1. to 1. Also at 20-1, to 1, the new face of Bass, in my opinion, and one hell of an angler, um, is Chris Zaldane. He's been a pro for, for seven years. He has 15 top 10s. That doesn't count the start of this year. And two wins. This is his fourth classic appearance. He's hungry. He's done well on local uh, on local uh, lakes with an 18th finish at Kentucky. He is one heck of an angler. And if you want, you can win a chance to fish with Chris on Bassmaster.com. I don't know all the, the details, but you can go there and find out the details. It is Chris Zaldane. Now it's getting fun. Let me just say that. We're going to start getting a little bit, maybe a little bit more detailed, but you want to know what? We're still going down with this. At 15 to 1 odds and having one hell of a year on Major League Fishing and a guy that just can catch fish anywhere you put him, it is Brent Ayler. He's been a pro for 14 years, 44 top 10s, 8 wins. He was the Forest Cup winner in 2006, Texas Bass Classic winner in 2015. He has he can fish anywhere and do it all. Brent Ayler at 15 to 1. Now we're getting down to two guys. We're getting two guys that are country and just fantastic anglers at 15 to 1 odds. Andy Montgomery, who I just cannot say enough good things about. He's been a pro for for 12 years. He's had 30 top 10s, two wins. And this is his fourth classic appearance. 
Uh, Andy has done very has done very well on Kentucky, which is nearby, with a 28th, 11th, uh, and then a, a 71st and a 46th when he was with FLW. Andy Montgomery, I have at 15 to one, and then my other country boy is Todd Faircloth at 15 to one. He's been a pro for 21 years, 45 top 10, six wins. He is in his 17th classic appearance, and he's been up and down, but recently he had a 17th and a 13th place finish on Kentucky. Thus, when his average was done, he had a very nice average. Arguably, the hardest person for me to put in this is the next one at 12-1. to 1. He is back-to-back classic champion. He's been a pro for five years, 26 top 10 finishes. He is the... He was the 22nd ranked angler when I did this. He is killing it at Major League Fishing. And he's had a ton of great finishes on nearby lakes. He is Jordan Lee. Now, I would normally, Jordan might be a little higher or a little lower. Probably a little higher, but the odds to win three classic championships in a row is is mind-boggling, but if there's one person that can do it, Jordan Lee can do it. You do not want to see Jordan Lee in the final six or the final 12 on the last day because if he is in it, he's going to win it. He is that good. You can, you should, you should put everything down and listen to this. If you, even if he doesn't win the classic, Jordan Lee is a fishing stud and he deserves all the credit that he that he gets he is someone we will be talking about in 20 years saying he has a chance to win this or win that or win this jordan lee is fantastic however i have him at 12 to 1 odds see i kind of lowered my voice so i wouldn't look at jordan lee 12 to 1 at 10 to 1 odds I'm going to start it off with Brent Chapman. Not having a great year so far on Major League Fishing, but Brent had a fantastic year last year. 24 years, professional, 38 top 10s, 4 wins. This is his 14th classic appearance, and what I said, he's coming off a great year. Angular of the year in 2012, and in local tournaments, he's had a 9th, 52nd, 22nd, 28th, 46th, 14th, 56th, 87th, and 20th finish on local lanes, local ponds, or lakes, whatever you want to say. And so that is why I have Brent Chapman at 10 to 1. Also at 10 to 1, our boy for the radio show. Um, The curse is off of him, so that's good, but he's been a pro for 14 years. His name is Bobby Lane Jr., Big Fish Bobby Lane. This is 12th classic appearance. He has, uh, in 2017, he was the Major League Fishing World Champion. He is the 19th ranked angler. When I did this, he's had 64 top 10 finishes, four wins. Here's where it comes down to. He's had a a 7th, a 56th, a 52nd, a 1st, and a 58th all at Kentucky, thus that making him 10 to 1 odds. The next angler at 10 to 1 and a person everyone loves, G-Man, Gerald Swindle, 24 years as a pro, 18th classic appearance, angler of the year in 2004 and 2016. He's had 62 top 10s with two wins. Here's why he is 10 to 1. 31st, 18th, 20th, 9th, 25th, 22nd, 98th, and 21st. We could scratch that 98th in FLW in Kentucky in 2013. Gerald Swindle would be in the top four or five, I imagine. But right now, I have him at 10 to 1. Also at 10 to 1, a somewhat local, Brett Height, 19 years pro, 32 top 10 fin, uh, top 10s, 5 wins. This is his 6th classic appearance. He's had a 44th, a 3rd, a 7th, and an 11th and a 30th with a couple bad ones with FLW. Brett Height should be one of the guys that could be a sneaky assassin out there in the next couple days. At 9-1, to one, an angler that we all should know and is a really good angler. He's been a pro for 15 years. His name is 
Jacob Prosnick. 50 top 10s, 6 wins, 5th classic appearance. When I did this, he was the 28th angler, 28th ranked angler in the world. He's had a 15th, a 40th, a 9th, a 39th, a 26th, and some bad tournaments over there in Kentucky. But right now, I got a feeling Jacob Prosnick is someone we should watch. He is at 9-1 to one odds. At 8-1 to one odds, the, this young man came in second in angler of the year points last year. He's had 13 top 10s and one win. His name is Josh Bertrand. He's had a 6th and a 42nd on Kentucky. He's the 4th ranked angler when I did this. He is a young man that has a bright future, and he can he can flat out fish. So Josh Bertrand is at 8-1 to one odds. We're getting down to the nitty gritty at 7-1. to one. 19 years as a professional. 68 top 10s. 11 wins. This is his 18th Classic appearance, and he is the 2016 Classic champion, Edwin Evers. Here's some stats. 26th, 1st, 2nd, 68th, and 12th on Kentucky. Those are great. Edwin Evers at 7-1. Also at seven to one, his best friend, roommate, and I believe the best angler on the planet, Jason Christie. He's had 60 top tens, 15th wins. He was ranked fifth when I did this. This is his seventh classic appearance. He's had a fourth, a 28th, a 16th, a ninth, and a sixth all on Kentucky. Think about that. That's nearby. Are they going to fish the same? I hope so. But at 7 to 1 odds, someone I've been on the boat with, he might not like me, but that's okay. This guy is a flat out stud. This is Jason Christie. Watch out for him. Watch out for Jason Christie this year. It is his time to win. There's another person I'm going to say that about too soon. At 6 to 1 odds, 22 years as a professional, 79 top 10s, 10 wins, 19th classic appearances, 2009 classic champ, 2007 angler of the year, Skeet Reese. He's had a second, an 80th, a 48th, a 4th, a 29th, and a 4th all at Kentucky. He could win it. Skeet Reese, six to one. Also at six to one, Brandon Lester, one of the hottest anglers on the planet right now. He's had nine top ten finishes, forty sixth one ranked angler on Bass Fan when I did it. This is his third classic. One of the good dudes out there, fifty second and a ninth, all at Kentucky. Also, this is kind of his home water, so he has that opportunity to do something that has happened. Just a few handful of the times win on your home lake. I think he's like two hours from there, so it's still considered his home lake. Brandon Lester at six to one. Also at six to one, someone who is a local too and is a great angler. Wesley Strader. He's been a pro for twenty years. Fifty one top ten, six wins, third classic appearance. He's had a first in two thousand eight on Kentucky. He's at a 24th, a 40th, a 20 21st, a 59th, a 20th, and a 40th also. Wesley Strader. He's getting a little extra love because he's somewhat local. At 5 to 1, Aaron Martins. A Aaron, as we like to call him. A Aaron Martins. 20 years professional. 81 top 10s, 10 wins. He was 11th ranked angler on Bass Fan when I did this. 20th classic appearance. Angler of the year, 2005, 2013, 2015. He's had a 20th, a 15th, a 22nd, a 17th, a 14th, a 38th, and a 48th when I did my algorithm. If there's one person that deserves to win it, well, they all deserve to win it. But Aaron Martins would be a great classic champion. Great classic champion. In the Edwin Evers classic champion. 
He hasn't won one. He's the best angler to never win a classic champion, in my opinion. Also at 5-1. to one, one of the hottest anglers in the world. Now, that doesn't mean... That means how he's fishing. Let me make sure I say that. 26 top 10s. 5 wins. He was the number one ranked angler when I did this. Fourth classic appearance. 2012 FL Belgian champion. He's had a 25th, a 7th, a, a 42nd, and an 8th all on Kentucky with FLW. He is Jacob Wheeler. Jacob is a wealth of knowledge. One of the best interviews we've ever had on Fishing Florida Radio. Almost too good. We sounded like morons because he was that great. But Jacob Wheeler is at 5-1 to one odds to win this thing. Here's where it gets really tricky. The next angler we have at 3-1 to one odds is the greatest of all time. But if you look at his stats, he should be the favorite. He's been a pro for 29 years. 120 top 10s, 28 wins, including some with Major League Fishing. When I did this, he was the 6th ranked angler in the world, 7-time Bass Angler of the Year, classic winner 4 times. Here's the stats you need to hear. This is why I think he has a chance. So you're saying he has a chance. 54th, 2nd, 1st, 2nd, 1st, 3rd, 10th and 5th on the Tennessee River and Kentucky. Think about that. 54th, a 2nd, a 1st, a 2nd, a 1st, a 3rd, a 10th, and a 5th. Kevin Van Dam. Should he not be the top person? Should he not be the top person? That is my question. We'll see. And this could be his last classic. He's going to be coming out guns blazing and ready to fish. We'll find out how the GOAT, the greatest of all time, does. But at the last thing, at the 2-1 to one odds, this is his local pond. When they announced this, the first person we all started saying, this is his time to win the classic. I have been on the boat with this man. I love him like a brother. He is absolutely a ridiculously good angler. He did this thing. He did this skipping under a dock when I was with him on the boat that I'm st I still talk about and have tried to do. He is absolutely ridiculously good at fishing and deserves to win the, this classic. He is Ot Defoe. He's been a pro for 13 years, 44 top 10s, 6 wins. It's his 8th classic. He's had a 13th, 17th, and an 8th all on nearby Kentucky. But this is his home waters, and he has a great opportunity to po to hoist that classic champion championship this next week. He's going to have all eyes on him. How will that help? How will that make him fish? I can tell you one thing. He is calm, cool, and collective, and he is a really great angler. And I would love to see him win. First, first, first of all, because he's a great angler. Second of all, because he said he'd take me smallmouth fishing. And if he wins, I'm going to hold him to it. But Ot Defoe is two to one odds to win this year's classic. So there we go. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and the stats and uh, and the stats and how the anglers have done. I should mention I've used Kentucky as a reference on because it's a somewhat close lake versus the Tennessee River. And that's because they don't go fish the Tennessee River. FLW and Leeds have not been to the Tennessee River much. So that's what I've used in my algorithm on how to rank each anglers. So we say good luck to all the anglers. We'll be at the Classic doing lots of videos so check them out here on the channel um, if you only knew the amount of time this video took me. Most of the videos take me some time. This one's another level of time, getting the graphics and the people and the pictures. And I should say thank you to, uh, to Bassmaster.com. 
uh, in the media page. I got a majority of the pictures of the anglers there and then had to do the, the names. This was a lot of fun. We have a good time with this every year, especially because Ken Duke comes in. And, and Saturday, we'll be going over this, debating Ken Duke versus myself and picking who we think the top five anglers are going to be and who our, our long shots are going to be. So you can listen to that Saturday morning, 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on iHeartMedia or go to, you, uh, go to a Facebook channel and we'll do a live video. So if you like this, please go ahead, subscribe, click the notification button, like it. Tell your friends about it, share it, please, and uh, leave a comment. If you want some of our free prize packs, by all means, just go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash fishing Florida, and just send us a private message saying, I saw one of your videos and I want to be on the prize pack list. Or if you feel more inclined, go to, uh, go, just email us directly, info at fishingfloridaradio.com, and we'll get you set up and get you on the list. It's a bunch of prizes from some great companies. You're gonna be surprised, it's great stuff. So just email us or private message us or do whatever and just say you saw the video. So from myself and the other guys from Fish and Florida Radio, Mike and, and Boudreaux, thanks for watching. Classic is in just a few days and we're very excited about it. So until then, get your fish on.